Hello and welcome to Buyer's Remorse. I'm Justin. I'm Darren. Here on Buyer's Remorse, we find games that are in each other's libraries that have been untouched or unplayed, and we subject each other to them for 60 minutes to see if they are a wonderful buyer's confirmation or a dreaded buyer's remorse. What one did I have you play for today? Little Mouse Encyclopedia. <laughs> Well, when you say play, I mean... Yeah, yeah this is a, a bit of a cruel one because <laughs> I knew what it was and I knew why you probably had it. You probably got it for your daughter. What what do you think about this <laughs> game? Is it a game or is it really just an encyclopedia where you're just looking up information? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly that. It's, it's uh, an interactive pop-up book. Okay. So... Are there animation bits to it? A little bit, a little bit. So, I mean... Okay, so it's it's basically it only costs five bucks. It's by this uh, the developer is called Circus Atos, and they've made they've made a couple of games. They seem to be very chilled, laid back developer group. I'll talk about them a little bit. Um, well, I should just talk about them now. It's basically it's four indie indie developers. They're based in um, Czech Republic. They're in Prague. They all have full time jobs, and they did it. Like two games, or actually no, they, I think they've done three. They did two games, they did, they did them just for fun. Basically the website is explicitly saying they're not for hire, they're not looking for anyone to, to like help them out. They're just like, just leave us alone, don't bug us, we make this on our own time, and that's it. Um, so they made this, they made another, another game on mobile called, I think it's called Ahoy in English, but in, in, um, Czech? It's a huge, but with like, a H O O O J. So I'm guessing it's a hoy. <laughs> um, and basically, you pilot a canoe through a river that just zigzags. I've got no idea what's going on. But they make all these kind of cutesy games. The animation. Did, did you play that game? No, no, no. I just watched the YouTube video of it. Yeah, it's uh, the animation is really good. The it's just the game is just it's not a game. It it just it isn't. So I could easily see myself playing inverted quotations, inverted commas, uh, playing this game for 10 minutes at a time, but not for a whole fucking hour. <laughs> it was really dull, man. Ah, oh, but you did have to play for yeah. a whole hour. <laughs> did you make it all the way through the entire encyclopedia? Is, uh, it, is there a section that's listed alphabetically? Well, here's the other thing, right? So basically, well, okay, look, let me just explain how it works, right? So you've got, you start off, you've got four chapters, I suppose, right? You've got the garden, the pond, the underground, like so the kind of burrow and the forest. So you start in the burrow and you got like the little mouse's house and then you all you do is you just click on the screen and then he will move to where your pointer was. It's just, it's just a point and click. And then there's a, like a ton of animals and insects and bugs and larva and flowers and things that you can click on. If you click on them, you get like a little animation. Like if you click on an earthworm, it'll kind of curl up and then uncurl. It's nothing special, nothing huge. And then if you right click, or if, or if you, there's a little kind of checkbox off to the side, if you click on that, you'll get like a little box that pops up. And so on that box, uh, it'll have some kind of information. So it basically is exactly that. It's a digital pop-up book where you just click on things, they'll move a little bit, much the same as a, as a pop-up book would work, just re repetitive motion, kind of the same thing, the same animation over and over again. And then it's got like a little thing of information. Okay. It's kind of like the children's books that have a window. So it's a, it's a double page and the top page is cut so you can open the window and look inside. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like that. And so what happens is if, okay, I bought this because I thought I could use it in class with some students, or I thought I'd play with my daughter. Like you said, I had no idea that I would be buyer's remorsing this guy. So, um, uh, but even as a, as a teaching tool or even as a fun tool for kids, yeah, maybe for my daughter, it would be more fun because it'd be more relaxed. But in class, this is completely useless because, well, for a start, there's too much, like, you'd have to know, you'd have to really plan what you're doing. It's not the kind of thing where you can just click around. You'd have to have more of a focus, you know, like, okay, we're doing vegetables. So I guess the garden would be good because you got all your vegetables there. But the burrow seems to have, there's a bit where you can go above ground and you can see some plants. You can go off to the side and there's like a little pond. 
but there's actually already another area called the pond, so the borough is a mix of like lots of things. One thing I was looking for was like, man, there's no index. And so like you said, you know, it would make a lot more sense if there's just an index. I found that in like my 58th minute. <laughs> so it's like, oh, fine. So it does exist. It does have an index, which is very useful because, yeah, otherwise you'd have to remember where, I don't know, where the, the uh, you know, where was the damselfly? Was it in the burrow section, but you go out the ground and off to the pond, or is it actually in the pond area? Why was it so difficult to find the index? It's in the main menu under an icon that's not labeled with English. It's just, a, it's just a symbol. So it's like, you have to dig for it. And so, yeah, I eventually found it just because I was kind of like, well, what else is going on here? Is this all that the game's got? So I, w I was just looking through the options for like languages and stuff. And, oh, there's the index. And the index is, it's good. It's, it's all done. And you don't have to find the stuff to unlock them. So you can just go in and find everything. Cause it was like, oh, it's got like all the plants. There's garlic here. It's like, it tells you about garlic. Um, but the problem is, and here's another reason why, I'm kind of confused what level this is aimed at. Because the language is really, really hard, you know? So it's like, yeah, it's it's cutesy and it's made for kids, definitely. But the language that they use to describe the things is really too hard for my students and too hard for my daughter at the time. And probably too dry? Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and it doesn't have a, a lot of explanation because they're only working with a tiny little text box. So on the on the box, they'll have like maybe some extra diagrams to show you, like maybe the stages of a pupa developing or whatever. But they'll have these really weird words. And I think that might be maybe a translation issue where they've gone for, you know, some of the more scientific words rather than something that's easier for young children to understand. But I learned some things. Here's what I learned. I learned that a very small fish is called a fry, and I didn't know that before. Um, and that really now explains to me the 40 years too late why we say small fry versus big fish, because I always thought that they were talking about something small in a frying pan. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, ar it's archaic English that's used to describe, uh, it's, it's like a group word, like pride of lions. It, it, they also said a fry of children, like... That sounds a bit disturbing. Something maybe. Well, especially since your first thought is a frying pan. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, a fry, a fry of children. There you go. Uh, but yeah, I had to Google that, and that is what you get in Little Mouse uh, Encyclopedia. It's very limited when it comes to like uh, words and, and diagrams and stuff, and it can give you a basic idea. But I often found I was confused. Like, who's the target audience? Who's going to really understand th these concepts? Especially if there's not some sort of mini game. There's no mini games at all. Zero. Only click on that, a little animation, click on the box, some hard or information. So unless what their idea is, you play it with your mom or your dad, and then your dad reads it and then explains that to you. That's the only way I can see. It. A kid's definitely not reading this, going, "Oh, right, okay." Um, you know, that's the um, you know, uh, an insect has you know, uh, you know, a, th a, th a thorax. You know, like. And at that one point, that's what it is. It's like in three points, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. It's like, no, nah, no, no, no five year old's going to know what that is. Or maybe they, maybe kids today are really smart and I'm just an idiot. Um, it's, yeah, so it just, it's basically not the right level, I think. But, and here's, so here's the flip side of that. If they are the game side versus the information side, if they are on the level where they enjoy the game side of just clicking around and clicking on things and watching things move, they won't be on the level of the information, but if you're at the level where you understand the information, then the game is gonna to be too kidsy for you. So again, what's the target? I don't understand what the target uh, the, the target audience is. And so that's it, that, that is it. I spent an hour with this game, clicking on everything. I went through all four worlds. Um, I don't think I found everything, to be honest. I mean, it's all there. I just are, don't think I clicked on everything. Are there achievements? Yeah, so basically you get you get a bunch of achievements. Did but you get cards? I think that's why I got the game in the first place. Because <laughs> um, I've got like six hours on this game already, which is why at the beginning of Buyer's Remorse, Justin always says, games that are untouched or unplayed. And yeah. the, the farm for cards one <laughs> falls under that. <laughs> you, have, you have touched it a lot for cards, but you have not actually played it. Um, so yeah, so I definitely farmed this, this guy for cards. Would you recommend it to me? Hmm... It would be a hard sell, man. Like, there's really... Unless you wanted to have a little encyclopedia handy rather than use Google, like, if you wanted to look... You'd be much better off just watching some David Attenborough and using Wikipedia. 
Would you recommend it to anyone? I would. Yeah, I'd say if you want to get your kids into like if would, they're, if they're you young say... enough, I'd say younger. The younger, the better, because playing with your family and then your kids clicking around, even just like basic mouse and hand coordination like just click around the burrow click on the fly and then when you click on the information you can read it and say oh you know flies lay eggs rather than rather than you know flies blah 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 and you know all this weird scientific words just explain it to your kid in a simple way do you think that the children could enjoy enough just clicking around and looking at the animation yeah i think so because the animation is great it's really well done it's beautiful i know that when i was really young we had those stickers that would move mm -hmm. if you looked at them at different angles and i was oh, obsessed like all, all with the those. rulers and pencil cases and stuff like that yeah yeah so what age group do you think would be best for this one six ish seven ish maybe like preschool or like first grade maybe something like that so like preschool up to maybe first or second grade u.s style yeah and i'd say i think actually this might have been a port as well i think it probably was originally on uh for tablet that does make sense yeah uh just click around the screen point on the screen and stuff um yeah i mean it is interesting there's a lot of stuff happening on the page that you look at you can move around you get to see animals in their like kind of naturalish habitats and things like that and you, you do learn a lot. You, you do learn a few things. And then as a dad, you'll probably learn things like where the word small fry comes from. So you learn something. <laughs> I learned something. Yeah. You played it for an hour. Would you play it again? Are you going to go in to get all those achievements? Nah, those no, achievements? no, no, definitely not. Find but, absolutely everything in all the pictures. But the thing is for, for a Chivo Hunter, this game is perfect because it doesn't require much. You just basically, what you would do is you would just open up the walkthrough and then just be like, okay, I need to get this, this, and this. And then just, it's a, it's a stress-free 100% completion for some some hunters so yeah i would definitely recommend it to the, those guys what three tags would you give it um it's uh informative mm -hmm. um point and click and very cute okay and would you say this is a buyer's confirmation or a buyer's remorse i'm gonna have to go with confirmation on this like i mean it's not my type of thing really and it's it's not really a game but the dev team has done a good job of taking like traditional media and moving it into digital so and you know a little bit informative uh, like it's quite informative along the way so yeah confirmation buyers confirmation